Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser and we are modelling for Advantage. So Warlord Games has sent us a copy of SPQR Clash of Heroes Starter Set Revised Edition. Really stoked about this. But first, let's have a quick word from Johnny B. Johnny B can't be with us today. He's not dead, but Britain is in lockdown. So uh, here's something from Johnny B at home. Well, folks, with the imminent release of SPQR, me and Kaiser really need to get our warbands together. Now, Kaiser's already got some barbarians for the likes of mortal gods and whatnot. So I am going to be taking on the Romans. I'm going to put some together. Let's see how they go. So let's crack this bad boy open. So, you know, let's be honest about this stuff. Warlord has sent me a review copy to have a look at, which I really appreciate. We mostly do, I think, because we have a trade account with them. You can buy a lot of their stuff from us. Basically, the starter armies for Bolt Action, uh, also Waterloo and Hail Caesar. Uh, we can't get these just yet because they're only available to suppliers, uh, to traders, if you buy a huge bundle and we're just too small for that. So that's the reason that they've sent us a review copy of it. Now, this game did get a little bit of bad press in the early days. And the reason for that was its points were quite badly out of balance, it seems. The principal thing that they've gone and done with this revised edition, I think, is they have listened to that player feedback and they have revised the game. For anyone that already has this, there's an offer on at the moment until the 24th of March, I think it was, saying recognising this is a new edition come out very soon after the original edition, that if you buy one of the kind of core infantry sets for like 20 quid, they're going to give you a free updated copy of the rules. Check out their website for details on that. It's not just them, it's through some of the major distributors as well. Although I don't know which, they only announced this game yesterday. You do get a lot of stuff in here. From memory, it retails for 40 quid. So let's have a look. You get a free 196 page full color softback rule book, which was a lot harder to say than you might think. Eight plastic Caesarean Romans with Gladius, or swords. Eight plastic Roman Caesarean legionnaires with Pilum, and a Roman hero. We also get 40 plastic Gaul warriors, 12 tribesmen archers, a Gaul chieftain. We get some heroes and unit cards, five of. Water slide decals for the Romans and the Gauls, and the 12 six sided dice. Or well, as you can see here. So let's have a quick look at that. 8, 16, 56, 68 miniatures for 40 quid. Not bad at all. And two heroes, 70 miniatures for 40 quid. That is a very, very good price. And the rule book. So opening the box then, we start with their lovely full colour soft back rule book this is really nicely produced for a soft cover rule book it's it is all in color it's nicely stylized the kind of design work that's gone into this is really nice there's a lot of scenarios and so forth and it seems to be broken down where there's a set of scenarios as well as stats for your different armies there are lots of different factions in here not just the two that come in the box so we have Warbands from Athens, Britain, Caesar's Legions, Dacia, Gaul, Germania, Iberia, Imperial Rome, Macedonia, Persia, Spartan, Thebes, and Mercenaries. Definitely missing from that list, Carthage and Republican Rome. These are the two armies I'd like to see. Um, so the idea of this is, is, is it's about warbands, and it's very much focused on campaign play. It seems to have a scenario system. You, play, you build your warband, I build my warband, we play a game, some people die, some people get better, and our heroes develop a little bit. But the way that it does a kind of scenario matching from one mission to the next, um, although some of you guys are getting better, the weaker player kind of dictates the size of the battle. So that's quite interesting. I've seen it played um, in the previous version at around about 500 points, and that seemed to be about 15 models. If you were a powerful army, like Romans or Macedonians or something, whereas it was uh, about 30 models for Gauls or something like that. I'm just gonna have a quick look, because one of the big problems with them before was I think that the Romans were just too expensive. So let's see what the Roman Legionary now costs. The Roman Legionary does seem to still cost 24 denarii, and I think that that was one of the big problems. But we'll have a bit more of a look. Anyway, that's the rule book. 
nice. Remember, if you've already got this, have a look at their website. There are many ways that you can buy just a single box of miniatures for 20 quid and get a free updated rule book. Next thing, Warlord starts. That's really good for this. We get a box topper inside. Very nice because it has protected your rule book from all the scratchy plastic inside. No disappointments here as we open up. This is nicely for the price, 40 quid. There's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, I'll just separate these out. Do 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 do. Not what they all are. Do 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 do. So we have got a mixture of infantry on sprue and infantry in the new Warlord Resin. And then of course, it is a skirmish game, so it is intended to play uh, individually based models. It is not a rank and flank game. Uh, we've got our unit cards. So, we seem to have 75 lipped round bases. Very nice. 12 dice, as you might expect. Unit cards, we'll have a look at those in a moment. Packed by Mirella, she seems to do a lot of packing over there. Uh, and some water slide decals. We've got enough for 25, 50 Celts or Gauls. And two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 40 Caesarean Romans. Uh, these are interesting then, these decals, because the way that these work is they go around they plant on the shield and they're doing the, the trim in the corners for you. That's the that's the boring stuff, I suppose. Um, so, the sprues. First sprue, then, this is their Celt sprue, I think they call it. It's been around for quite a long time. Celtic Warriors. We've got three of the regular Celtic Warrior sprue and one of the Celtic Warrior Command. And the major difference between those two is on the regular Celtic Warriors, you've got lots of heads up the top, and on the command, you've got some different standards. These are interesting in the way they've been around for a long time, these kits, and if you buy the Hail Caesar starter set, this is what you're going to get. But the way that the models are built, you've got 10 upper bodies and 10 lower bodies, and it's like a ball and socket joint, the way they fit in there. Maybe you'll see that a bit better on a still if we get you on. So there's quite a bit of sort of forward movement, and they're a bit more action pose. They do tend to look a bit lurchy when you've built them. Um, if you've not handled this kit before, it's an interesting design decision. They seem to have moved away from it a bit in their more recent kits, but it is interesting. The only thing to really watch out for is some of these guys. This is a, there's a mixture of poses in here, and some of them have got chain mail of, on the upper body. And you need to be careful when you fit them to the to the legs. Some of the legs have just got the kind of lower part, the, the skirt element of the chainmail shirt um, just below the belly is part of those legs. So you really need to put these chainmail bodies on the ones with the chainmail legs. There's not quite enough on here for everyone to have a shield. And that is a major criticism I had of this kit when I looked at Hail Caesar. You've got 40 of these guys, but they've recognized that and they have provided you with a big bag of additional resin shields, which is great. And some additional resin heads. So this is my first look at uh, infantry models in the new Warlord resin. And mate, it is an interesting product. It is really quite soft. There's a lot of give in this, but looking at the, the finish quality on these, you know, it's it's very clean, it's very neat. There's a little bit of flash, it'll require a little bit of work, but it is nice. I wonder what these are gonna be like to have spears and things made out of them. Soft plastic is good for spears and things like that in terms of the fact that if it bends, it won't break, it's not gonna stab you or whatever. The problem with it is it's often bent and it's gonna stay that way. These shields all look pretty straight, so Hopefully, they make more stuff like that. I know that they've done some Prussian lancers, and I'm not, I've not heard that the lances were all sort of bent permanently. But the the definition, the level of detail on these heads, can I get you a still, is really quite good. And it's providing them with the option to give you some alternatives. That's the first batch of Celts, but you also get in the in this is you get a bag of. Ooh, let's move this out of the way. 
We get a bag of Bowman. So these are single sculpt Celts, which is interesting. Just going to set these out. Do, 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 do. I think it's supposed to have 12. I'm just going to check whether we actually do have, not only do we have 12, but do we have 12 unique poses? And it's looking like, oh, no, he's the same. He's the same. I'm thinking we might have six poses then. By the looks of things. Yeah. Yeah. We've got six poses here. And again, the detail on them for a single cast piece is pretty nice. Um, none of these bows are damaged, which is good. Some of them do look a little bit lopsided. But these are supposed to be, you know, like hunting bows. Uh, so I don't expect them to. Okay, so there's a bit. There's a bit here. This guy's got some arrows and they definitely are bent, but they bend back into place quite well, it seems. We'll see how they come out painted up, but they've certainly got a much finer level of detail. They're sculpting on the bodies of these guys. You know, they've got very muscular looking, looking dudes, but it's much subtler on these. It's much more natural looking. Um, and I do, I'm a bit, I'm a bit old school, to be honest. I do like single, single piece models in a single sculpt uh, just because of the preparation time and as long as these are clean there's very little flash to remove as long as they're cleanly cast i'd much prefer to have a range of uniquely posed models so that's really nice i don't know why we've got the these in warlord resin and these on spirit i guess it's because of the mixture of stuff that they already do and then we get our two heroes uh do, do, do. one roman and one gaul uh, so our Roman dude is very much a like, ooh, you know, just doing the order type thing. Whereas our, our Celtic warrior is very much a come at me bro type dude. Very nice looking models in both cases. So um, it, would there be any value in getting two of these sets? I think the only thing where you get some duplication that you didn't need is these are quite iconically posed. I suspect that there aren't more than six poses of these archers, but you know, in a unit of six to 12 guys, having a couple identicals, not a big problem. So the models, I think really nice. I'm going to look at the Romans then. So with any luck, Johnny B has been building some of these uh, as we go through the video. The Romans that you get in here are part of, again, uh, the 2013 Sprue Caesar's Legions. So they make two Roman Sprues, uh, so far as I know. The one that comes with the Hail Caesar start set has got 10 guys on a, on a sprue. They've got the square shields that are kind of very imperial looking and they're wearing the Lorica Segmentati, the, the, the straps of metal across them. Whereas these Caesarean ones, there's only four guys on a sprue, but you get more sprues. Um, but these are wearing chain mail. So, and they've got a very rounded looking shield. And I'm just gonna look at the sort of, sort of sculpt quality difference between the two, really. So, I would say, ah, uh, so the helmets of these, yeah, the helmets on these Caesarian ones, I've all got helmet plumes, quite dynamic looking wavy helmet plumes actually. Whereas again on these ones that you get in the um, uh, Caesar's Invasion of Britain, uh, the Roman Invasion of Britain one, they've got the ones with the big plate at the back, like a bit more of an iconic Roman look. But the pylum on those ones is a bit is a bit chunky looking it's a slightly nicer sculpt on these i think i prefer these actually these 2013 ones caesar's legions so you get how many different types so interestingly there are three different sprues here wghcr one and two and WGHCR com. So you get two of the command sprues where the guys have got standards and gladiuses and you've got the kind of wolf's pelt dude as well. Then you get one sprue where they've all got gladiuses and there are a couple of slings on here. And you get the other sprue you get is where they've got piler. Um, so actually out of these 16 models, I think you've only got four piler. But... Uh, Pretty sure that every Roman legionary carried a pilot. 
The sling thing is interesting. I assume that there is some account somewhere where um, Romans allegedly used slings. I'm not sure. I know in the in the imperial the later imperial period, they had all kinds of extra weapons. Had darts in the back of their um, shields and so forth. Those models. Um, again, quite nice. I think that they're slightly nicer than the ones that you get from the Hill Caesar starter sets. And look at these unit cards now then, so it gives a bit of an indication of how the game is played. Gaul Warriors, Caesar's Legionary, Gaul Tribesman, Gaul Hero. So, how do these unit cards work? It tells you... SPQR Death or Glory that the Roman Caesar's Legionary is a minion for 24 denarii. So this is the kind of point system with which you build them. We've got some indications of how you might paint them. And it tells you that he's an infantry minion that comes with a chainmail shear, a large shield, and a sword. You have the option to purchase piler and slings. You can buy horns and you can buy standards. You have Testudo and Shield Wall special roll. I don't know the game in any detail, so I wasn't going to go through these in any in any particular detail. It was more about showing you how the different unit types can be upgraded and outfitted differently. So it's possible to buy Roman legionaries for your warband that don't have piler. And there's nothing in here that says they can't have piler and slings and the standard and and and. But for the Romans, they're fairly standard. Whereas with your Gauls, your Gaulic tri your Gaul tribesmen, they cost me a ten denarii. Uh, that is because they come with bow or sling. That's it. Gold tribesmen, bow or sling. But you can buy up to two javelins each. They can have helmets and leather armour, shields and swords. And the warriors loads more options on. So this is how you provide the variety in the units and as you see on the heroes you've got basically a page you probably can't read a word of that. Um, so your heroes again you customize them yourself. It's an interesting system. Um, having seen, having watched the game played it is a game where there's a lot of dice get rolled and there's a lot of re-rolling but it does all seem fairly slick because it runs on this system that basically to achieve anything you need a six and you have modifiers to the dice. So, uh, Gaul Warriors have plus two to their melee dice. So when they make a melee roll, they add two, so they need a four rather than a six. They could just write four there, but the point is that in terms of the mental math, everything is modified from a roll of six. And I think that, that actually does make it a little bit easier to keep track of. It's a game where people move six and take two actions. Um, and it is a game that's really, I think, about developing a shared narrative with your friends with a campaign system. We're going to have a look at this. Johnny B is going to make some Romans. I'm going to make some goals. I have actually already got some of these goals painted, which I'll show you a, a little bit of a look at. Uh, I mean, I can show you them here because I have had uh, been using these um, in my Mortal Gods, which is another ancient skirmish game. I'd like to play Big Battle Ancients, but um, this is just a way of me scaffolding towards that point, really. If there's anything that's missing in here, it is a starter set, is there isn't a playmat, and I do think playmats are important. I'm not going to criticise the product for a lack of a playmat, but if you were going to make a, a starter set for under £50 for rank beginners, I think a playmat is a really useful inclusion because it does allow you to get going out the board. It has included some uh, fairly simple dice, which is going to get you going. But this is Ancients. Your average 17, 15, 12-year-old isn't looking to play Ancients. Does it need a play mat? It probably doesn't. And it's probably the only significant thing that is missing. I like the fact that it's given you a full rule book, not a kind of cut down rule book. You don't need to go away and buy a bigger set of this. You just need to develop your army. And because it is a game where you have a war band that develops over a series of battles, it's got that legacy content which players often want but find damages games. I hope that the scenario system in it means, and there is a mercenary system as well, so if you're a bit short you can just port some guys in for one battle. Hopefully it keeps the battles competitive but still allows for that development because that's the real trick, not having it all snowball on you. 
just got a bit nervous there that the uh, camera had run out of time. All right, that was the first look at SPQR. We're going to be painting these, and as soon as this lockdown nonsense is over, we're going to have a look at playing a game. Thank you for watching. <laughs>